been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 137. Your resting place is in Jesus Christ alone. He is a credible witness that proves to you how to successfully live life through him in every season. Jesus perfectly aligned himself with the spirit of God and the word of God. And because of Jesus' loyal love for Abba Father, he totally surrendered serving as his perpetual habitation on earth. Now, as we are named as his successors, Jesus actively participates in our lives as the way, the truth, and the life. Now, when you make room for him, you are assured of a hosting God's presence and God's power without limitation. The first section we like to address is peace and rest are in the finished work of Calvary. Our first scripture we are going to look at is from Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the first through the fourth verses and the ninth verse from the King James Version. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. It's not our rest, it is the rest of a God. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Now, how is it mixed with faith? It is the word of God and it is the spirit of God. When we receive our salvation, we receive Holy Spirit and we receive the faith of God at that time. Now, when we receive the word of God, it would be the Logos word and then we mix it with the faith of God it becomes the rhema word, which is the poor forth word, giving us revelation of that word. And we are making room to receive it. So it's just like if you were making bread and you needed some baking powder or even yeast or anything to cause it to rise. If you never put that Reese in your bread, it is never going to rise. So it's just like this. We are making the fruit of God when we have the word of God and the spirit of God working together to produce the faith and the resting place that we need in him. For we which have believed do enter into rest. And this rest is a reposing down you are abiding and it goes on to say as he said as i've sworn in my wrath if they shall enter to my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world 
So this is saying that these works, when they're saying they're finished, that they had come into being at that time. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. And that is in Genesis. And the ninth verse says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And that's the Sabbath rest where we have intermission from all our labors. This is what Jesus said in John 17, the first through the fifth verse from the King James Version. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou have given him. And this is a life eternal that they should know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. Now this finished in Greek means that Jesus brought to full development the work that God has given him. It is considered accomplished. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had before the world was. So this is Jesus having a set position in the earth, even though he was a son of God, it was like taking a step down because he surrendered himself to be man. And now Jesus is saying, Glorify me with thy own self so I can have that same glory that I had before the world began. And then let's also look at the from the foundation of the world that Jesus was slain. In Revelation, the 13th chapter, the 8th verse from the King James Version, it says, All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, that's Jesus Christ, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb from the foundation of the world. Now this slain is showing that Jesus was slaughtered. He was maimed and he did all that for you and I. So all his broken pieces, we are now whole and well and we can receive the covenant of peace that he has for us. Now let's also look in John the 19th chapter, the 30th verse from the King James Version, which shows the finished work at Calvary. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And this is tetelestai, which means it's been fulfilled. It's been concluded. It's been complete. Now it's been discharged because of what Jesus has done. He says, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Let's look in Genesis, the second chapter, the first through the third verse of King James Version. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. That means that they were completed and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he made. So that means that that was God's uh, occupation that he did at that point. And it said that, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He hallowed it and he dedicated for his purposes because that in it he had rested from all his work which he created and may which god created and may now this rested here in genesis 2 says that now he seized his work and he desist his work so he can totally be at rest in the work that he had finished let's look in 
Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 11th verse from the Amplified Version, classic edition. This is for in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, set it apart for his purposes. So again, this word rested means to settle down and remain. In Leviticus, the 16th chapter, the 30th and 31st verse from the King James Version is showing how the finished work of Calvary and the Sabbath work together because once you have the finished work of Calvary to work from, then now you can remain at rest. It says, for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you where you are covered. So Jesus is our high priest and he made the atonement. And once he made the atonement, he could sit down because he could rest at that point. He said, to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you. So that means that that day of atonement shall actually be observed as a Sabbath rest unto you. And you shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. That means we are to continually remember and never forget the work of Calvary. In Psalm the 118th division, the 22nd through the 25th verse from the King James Version says, The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is a prophetic, but now we know it's fulfilled in Jesus. And it says, This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. For this is the day which the Lord has made. And that day is not just this day, but this was the atonement day that brings us to the Sabbath day, which is now can be seen together because. Of Jesus' work, we have rest. It says, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so now in verse 25, it shows just how we can appropriate Jesus' finished work to give us the continued rest that God wants us to have. And it says, Save now, I beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, send now prosperity. Why are we asking God to do it now? Because it's finished and we are at rest so we can receive what he already designed for us. What is the continual message we'd like to share with you today as a member of the body of Christ you have already inherited Jesus' peace to inhabit his peace even now. In other words, you own his peace and he has given you the full rights to inhabit it as well. What supernaturally transitions you into the rest of God and never exit it is his peace, which outclass and outlast all the peace the world may offer you without uh, occupying the peace of God. You cannot rest in him without uh, occupying the Lord is your resting place. You cannot host his peace. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615. 
Extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Always remember, as a member of the body of Christ, you have already inherited Jesus' peace to inhabit his peace. Even now, in other words, you own his peace and he has given you full right to inhabit it as well. What supernaturally transitions you to enter to the rest of God and never exit is his peace, which outclass and outlasts all the peace the world may offer you. Without occupying the peace of God, you cannot find rest in him. And without occupying the Lord as your resting place, you cannot host his peace. Now this section, we like to talk about peace and rest are in the kingdom of God where Jesus is the king of glory. These scriptures are going to show us how Jesus teaches us about rest in peace. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 25th through the 34th verse from the King James Version. This is Jesus saying, and therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or yet for your body, which you should put on is not the, the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Yes. We are the temple of a Holy Spirit. And when we drink, we drink of the Spirit. And when we eat, we eat the Word of God. First, it being the milk of the Word, which means when we keep on getting nourishment, we need more and a higher type of nourishment, which would be the meat of the Word. It says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither they gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Yes, because when God made man, he said, this is a very good. He says, we're making them together. And he was speaking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He says, we are making them in our own image, in our own likeness, so they can be like us and also behave like us and look like us. And he says, I'm giving you dominion. So I want you to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. And that will give you the dominion that God wanted us always to have. And then he says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cupid into his statue? No one. Don't even worry about it. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now this is... Solomon and all of his glory, we could see what God had given him. He named it throughout the Bible to show you just the vast abundance of wealth and glory that Solomon had. But this is Jesus saying, if you compare what Solomon had to the lilies, how they got it was a very different. So he says, I want you to learn from the lilies of the field that how they grow and how much they grow, how much they don't toil, how much they don't spin, but yet they receive the best of God. They don't fret, they don't worry, they just stay in a posture of receiving from God. And then Jesus goes on to say, wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O little faith? And when he says, yes, he's clothing you because he wants you covered 24-7. And he's calling this little 
faith because he wants to show them that they had more faith, but they had more doubt than they had faith. So he was trying to get them to believe more of his word so then they can exercise the full measure of the faith that they've been granted. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall you eat or what shall you drink or with wall shall you be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your father, heavenly father, knoweth that you have need of all these things. So now Jesus is comparing the world with the church and saying, they're seeking after things that you don't have to seek after for Heavenly Father already knows you need these things. And then he says, now I'm going to give you the priority. And he says, but seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then this seeking is our priority is always looking to God, looking to the king that's in the kingdom of God, which is Jesus Christ, looking at two he is a righteousness because you're the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And you being the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then you're able to look at all things the right way. You think right about Jesus. You think right about the word. You think right about the Holy Spirit. You think about right about God. You think of right about provision is given and is not earned in the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, this is what you can begin to say because added means you're extending the kingdom of God over everything, everywhere, everyone that concerns you and God. So that you want to be able to do that even as you voice activate that every morning. And so it says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient of today is the evil thereof so you should still keep thinking on the provision and don't wander off where you're worrying and then in matthew the 11th chapter the 28th through the 30th verses from the king james version this is jesus still teaching and he says come unto me all you that labor and this labor is your full of fatigue. You feel fatigue. He says, and are heavy laden. That means they're overburdened. He says, and I will give you rest. So this rest now is where you are exempt. When you're saying you're exempt, that means you're exempt from working. And he says, take my yoke upon you. And this yoke is considered a coupling beam of the balance to keep you in order, balance, wholeness, fullness, overflow, and access to excess. And he says, and learn of me. He says, I want to teach you because if you can see how I'm doing it and how I want to do life with you, then you are going to remain at rest. And he says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. That means he is not a taskmaster. He is not an oppressor. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. So this rest here is, you're going to find refreshment. You're going to find intermission. He says, for my yoke is easy. That means the reason why it's easy for you, because he's employing it with the, the, his work. And he says, and my burden is light. And this burden is his service to you that is not burdensome. So what you're doing, you are combining your life and living your life through him. And he's carrying all the weight because he did all the work. Now, in Isaiah, the 61st chapter, the first through the third verses from the voice translation is a prophetic word for Jesus Christ to know exactly what his work was. At this point, it said, the spirit of the Lord, the eternal, is on me. The Lord has appointed me for a special purpose. He has anointed me to bring good tidings to the poor. 
He has sent me to repair broken hearts and to declare to those who are held captive and bound in prison, be free from your imprisonment. He has sent me to announce the year of Jubilee, the season of God's eternal favor. For our enemies, it will be a day of God's wrath. For those who mourn, it shall be a time of comfort. As for those who grieve over Zion, God has sent me to give them a beautiful crown in exchange for ashes, to anoint them with gladness instead of sorrow, to wrap them in victory, joy, and praise instead of depression and sadness. People will call them magnificent, like great towering trees and standing for what is right. They stand to the glory of the eternal who planted them. Now, this was the prophetic word that Jesus read in Isaiah, but when he actually delivered this, this was in Luke, the fourth chapter, the 18th through the 21st verses. And when he showcased this verse, then he read this, that everything he had done had been fulfilled. And that word fulfilled means that it is finished. Now on our program today, you can enjoy the music of Deet White. And he's going to prepare for you this song called My Prayer Rain. So what we're saying is that, yes, while it looks like the rain might be too much, God has a purpose to take you to the place where you need to go. And that is a tsunami blessing inside and out. My Prayer Rain, D. White.
faith in you. So I, so I pray. Uh-huh. Please save me, I know you save me. 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 Please protect me from this rain. Visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. As a member of the body of Christ, you have already inherited Jesus' peace to inhabit his peace even now. In other words, you own his peace. And he has given you the full rights to inhabit it as well. What supernaturally transitions you to enter into God's rest and never exit it is his peace, which outclass and outlasts all the peace the world may try to offer you without occupying the peace of God. You cannot rest in him without occupying the Lord as your resting place. You cannot host his peace. The third section we like to address is peace and rest were evident throughout Jesus's earthly ministry. First, we are going to look in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the second verse and the 10th verse, because it shows us how the Holy Spirit was able to rest upon him. And because he was able to rest upon him, uh, then he was able to release the finished work because Jesus remained at rest in Holy Spirit. It says Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the second verse says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And that rest is showing calls to rest where Jesus now has the presence of God working in him. And then Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the 10th verse from the King James Version, it says, and in that day, there shall be a root of a Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. That means it's talking about the resting place. Why should be glorious now? Because they are receiving the dunamis power of Christ upon God's anointed Jesus Christ. And because we have inherited the ministry of Jesus Christ, this is for us too. Let's look at how Jesus walked with the word of God and the spirit of God. In John, the first chapter, the 30th through the 34th verse from the King James Version says, This is he of whom I said, this is John the Baptist, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. Now, even though the Jesus and John the Baptist were kin, he didn't know him until God gave him some qualifications of what she should look for. He says, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? And John bear record of 
him saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Now this boat is, it remained on Jesus. It abide on Jesus, stayed on Jesus. It stayed on Jesus like in a weight position. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, which is God, our Father, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say in this particular verse, but it says another gospel and with fire. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So again, this abode in verse 32 and this remaining in verse 33 are the same words in Greek. Remain, abide, stay, await. Now let's look at why the Holy Spirit was in a position on Jesus in John the third chapter, the 30th through the 34th verses from the King James Version. This is John the Baptist saying, he must increase, talking about Jesus, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthy and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all, and what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. So what it's saying that Jesus came with a good report and those who believe his report endorses God's as being trustworthy and God's credibility as being the absolute true and possible to lie. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, and this is the rhema of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. So Jesus did not have Holy Spirit in a limited portion, but it was like the tsunami blessing inside and out that cannot be contained. Let's also look at two scriptures that show him just how Jesus served and sanctified himself before God, but he separated himself from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life, which is Satan's domain. And in John, the fifth chapter, the 30th verse from the Amplified Version, the classic edition, this is Jesus. He says, I am able to do nothing for myself independently of my own accord, but only as I'm taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I'm bidden to decide. And as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision and my judgment is right. Just righteous because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. What loyalty that Jesus had. Now we can have the same loyalty as we live through him. Let's also look in John, the 14th chapter, the 30th and 31st verses from the Amplified Version of the Classic Dishes says, and these are the words of Jesus, I will not talk with you much more for the prince of this world is coming. And so now Jesus is changing his approach from teaching to more silence so that he can be in a position to win every battle because the only way he could lose it is if he voice activated the thing he shouldn't be talking about and so this is what jesus says and satan has no claim on me satan has nothing in common with me there is nothing in me that belongs to satan and satan has no power over me so that means that there was nothing inside nor outside that would give him the advantage he was off limits to jesus because jesus made sure because he was covered by the Holy Spirit. He had the word of God. He had the Holy Spirit without measure. And his love for God was a loyal 
level that it could not be penetrated. He says, but Satan is coming and I do as my father has commanded me so that the world may know, be convinced that I love the father and that I only do what the father has instructed me to do. I act in full agreement with his orders. And so Jesus is saying, this is how I'm doing it. Now, when we live through him, Jesus Christ, we can have the same identical success that Jesus enjoyed in the earth. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing. Not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. As a member of the body of Christ, no matter if you just received the Lord right now, today, even at this program's hearing, you have already inherited Jesus peace to inhabit his peace even now in other words you own his peace and you have been given full rights to occupy it as well what supernaturally transitions you to enter into god's rest and never exit it is his peace which outclass and outlasts all the peace the world may offer you without occupying the peace of God you cannot rest in him without occupying the Lord as your resting place you cannot host his peace now this fourth section we are going to address peace and rest are in Jesus succession plan with you next in line we're going to look in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the sixth and seventh verses from the King James Version. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now that peace means shalom and that peace means completion. And it says, and of the increase of his government and peace, which is shalom, shall there be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of a host will perform this. So even though it may be chaos and turmoil all around, we still can have peace when we have peace of God and when we have the rest of God. Let's look at what Jesus has done for us to ensure that peace in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the first through the sixth verse from King James Version. It says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Do we have to believe report so we can receive the report and make room for what God wants to do. He says, for he, talking about Jesus, shall grow up before him, God, as a, a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness and when we shall see him, there should no be no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did 
esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. They thought that he was being beat up for his own sin, but Jesus was sinless. And it says, but Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace which issue on was upon him and by his stripes we are healed everything that jesus has done and completed in the finished work was for our good and for god's glory and it says for we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the lord has laid on him jesus the iniquity of us all so it's like we were doing our own thing in our own way just trying to make it work but jesus was our atonement that created the finished work for us he was the perfect sacrifice that god needed to make us free and free indeed let's also look in the new testament because even though the word is not saying shalom it does mean shalom for peace and this is what jesus said in john the 14th chapter the 27th verse from the amplified version the classic edition it says a peace i leave with you my own peace i now give and bequeath to you not as the world gives do i give to you do not let your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and un settled also in john the 16th chapter the 33rd verse from the amplified version the classic edition this is again jesus he says i have told you these things so that in me you will have perfect peace and confidence so he wants us to live through him and he was telling even his disciples the same thing in the world you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration so it says they won't go away unless we live in peace and then we bring the same peace and rest into the environment that we're in but be of good cheer take courage be confident be certain be undaunted for i have overcome the world i have deprived it of power to harm you and I have conquered it for you what he says i'm giving it to you as the spoils of prey because jesus is a conqueror and we are more than a conqueror so we won a battle that we didn't fight he gave us the spoils of war now this is what romans the 16th chapter the 20th verse from the king james version says and the god of peace shalom shall bruise satan under your feet shortly and that shortly in greek means in haste he's not going to waste any time why because it's a finished work and he wants you to be in peace and remain at rest the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen the multitude of mercies and the multitude of grace and the manifold grace of god does the work in any environment in colossians the second chapter the sixth through the 15th verses from the living bible says and now just as you trusted christ to save you trust him too for each day's problems live in vital union with him live through him let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him see that you go on growing in the lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught so that's living in the word of god living with the spirit of god at your disposal all the time you are not quenching vexing or grieving him at all then it goes on to say, let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all he 
has done. Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers built on man's thoughts and ideas instead of on what Christ has said and also has done for you. For in Christ, there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ, his peace, his rest, and you are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. When you come to Christ, he sets you free from your evil desires, not by a bodily operation of circumcision, but by a spiritual operation, the baptism of your souls. For in baptism, you see how your old evil nature died with him and was buried with him. And then you came up out of death with him into a new life because you trusted the word of the mighty God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead in sins and your sinful desires were not yet cut away. Then he gave you a share in the very life of Christ for he forgave all of your sins and blotted out the charges proved against you. The list of his commandments which you have not obey. He took this list of sins and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. That's the battle ground which is finished because it's the finished work of Christ. So it's the Sabbath for you. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin and God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins were all taken away. Let's also see now what does that mean for us to do? We are free, but then this is how we continue to activate the finished work that God is looking for us to give back his word to him, his promise to him, because it is according to the good, acceptable, perfect will of God in Revelation, the 12th chapter, the 10th through 11th verses from the Living Bible says, and then I heard a loud shouting across the heavens. It has happened at last. It's like it's the finished work. God's salvation and the power and the rule and the authority of his Christ are finally here for the accuser of our brothers and sisters have been thrown down from heaven into the earth. He accused them day and night before our God. They defeated him. So we defeated Satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, which is our testimony, which is I plead the blood that speaks for me a better thing, that I am the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say, for they did not love their lives, but laid them down for him. It's just like Jesus laid his life down for us and we're willing to lay our lives down for him, surrendering to him and being loyal to God. Now on our program today, again, you're going to enjoy the music of D. White as he sings and presents to us an army of God. You see that part of the secession plan is that we move forward in sync with the word of God and with the spirit of God to take ground. And it looks like an army, but we are also moving forward as kings and we are also moving forward at priests. And it shows the peace of God. It shows the rest of God that we can't lose because Jesus already won and we 
have the scores of war to prove it. Let's hear Army of God, D. White. Strong in the Lord with the power of His might. I got His armor on and I'm ready to fight. I stand against Satan in this battle with sin. Against all evil forces of this world we live in. No weapon formed against me. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed with the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine. I'm more than a conqueror I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I have my waist right with the belt of truth I got my feet prepared for the gospel of peace And I got my breastplate of my shoot of faith to protect me from the wicked one. No weapon formed to get speed. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine, and I'm more than a conqueror. And again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, as a member of the body of Christ, you have already inherited Jesus' peace to inhabit his peace even now. In other words, you own his peace and he has given you full rights to occupy it as well. What supernaturally transitions you to enter into God's rest and never exit it is his peace which outclass and outlast all the world's peace that they may ever offer you without occupying the peace of god you cannot rest in him without occupying the lord as your resting place you cannot host his peace this fifth section we like to address peace and rest are proven as you make room for the finished work because it gives you total liberation in ephesians the fourth chapter the seventh and eighth verses from the king james version says but unto every one of us is given grace according to and that's joined to the measure of the gift of Christ. So we have the gift of Christ in us to access that so we can live through him in rest and in peace. Wherefore he said, when he ascended 
up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So what he's saying here is that when Jesus led captivity captive, it was captive and it cannot be loosed. And he says he's giving you gifts and these gifts are presents, not just inheritance, but now we get the spoils of war and everything that we would have within the kingdom of God that God desires to give to us. Now let's also look in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the seventh through the ninth verses from the Living Bible, it says, however, Christ has given each of us special abilities, whatever he wants us to have out of his rich storehouse of gifts. The psalmist tells about this, where he says that when Christ returned triumphantly to heaven after his resurrection and victory over Satan, he gave generous gifts to men. Notice that it says he returned to heaven. This means that he had first come down from the heights of heaven, far down to the lowest parts of the earth. And that's showing that he has the power in the heaven on earth and under the earth because God has given Jesus the greatest and the highest name above any other name that's named. Let's also look in Acts, the 10th chapter, the 36th through the 38th verses from the King James Version is the word, and this is the Logos word, which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. So when Jesus Christ is Lord of all in our life, we're going to have the peace that he's talking about. We're going to have the rest that he was talking about. This is that word, rhema word. I say ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism with John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, this to do Nami's power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So when we're talking about the oppression of the devil, we're talking about here is Satan who had tried to exercise dominion against those who were oppressed and that's why they were oppressed he said for god was with him and this is showing that jesus was a habitation of god through holy spirit where god lived in his heart by faith and that was so real by the results that he was receiving saying that in this session we're able to do the same thing let's look at the power of God in action in Isaiah the ninth chapter the third through the fifth verses from the King James verses thou have multiplied the nation and not increased the joy they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest as the men rejoice when they divide the spoil so what happened is that they were in position to receive the manifestation of God's promise because the height of their joy says that they had a triumphant and glorious state that doesn't change and it was in God. But they were believing God to move on their behalf and he did. He said, for thou have broken the yoke of his burden. That means he had abolished it. He shattered it to pieces and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. So this is this oppressor trying to be a driver, a taskmaster, an exactor of tribute to have somebody to be hard pressed. He says, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this one shall be with a burning and fuel of fire, showing that God's wrath coming down on his enemies this is a retribution but he will save you which is a restitution and is showing that you don't have a yoke anymore of oppression in isaiah 
the 10th chapter, the 27th verse from the King James Version said, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, the load, shall be taken away from his shoulder and his yoke from off his neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now this yoke being destroyed me now is ruined. It also means it's going to bring forth travail because of the fatness of the anointing. It is now going to bring forth the reproduction of your womb so that you can bring forth the body of Christ through you that needs to be saved. So they can say it is finished. So the new birth doesn't stop with you. It goes through you as Jesus lives through you. Let's also look in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the first through the seventh verse from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition. For now we can see just how free you are. It says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, the captive Jews, in Babylon and will again choose Israel and set them in their own land and foreigners who are proselytes will join them and will cleave to the house of Jacob Israel and the peoples of Babylonian shall take them and bring them to their country of Judea and help restore them that it means that those who kept them captive are not going to help them be free and the house of israel will possess the foreigners who prefer to stay with them in the land of the lord as male and female servants and they shall take captive not by physical but by moral right those of the foreigners who used to be oppressors are now agreeing to be servants to them. Those whose captives they have been and they will rule over their former oppressors. And it says, when the Lord has given you rest, and this is to cause to rest from the sorrow and pain and from your trouble and unrest and from the hard service with which you are made to serve you shall take up this taunting parable against the king of babylon and say how the oppressor has still the restless insolence the golden exacting city has seized the lord has broken the staff of the wicked the scepter of the tyrant rulers who smote the peoples in anger with insensitive blows and trod down the nations in wrath with unrelenting persecution till he who smote is persecuted and no one hinders anymore. So this is what God is also doing. He is reframing the enemy because he restrained them. They are keeping back because they know this was God, the Lord of hosts, who made us free. And it says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Why? Because this is what God has done for us for you but you may say that you're not free today well all you need to do is say this prayer to me and believe that god will totally restore you and bring you out why don't you say this prayer say dear heavenly father in the name of jesus i recognize that i am out of line with you and you are my savior so i need to be saved and i want to receive you right now i acknowledge jesus christ as my savior and as my lord and i ask you to forgive me of my sin and iniquity that i have made against you and you alone and i'm asking you to shed your blood over me i'm applying it to my life the blood of Jesus, and now I know I'm clean from all unrighteousness. 
come into my heart and be the savior of my life. I acknowledge you as savior, as Lord. And I thank you that now old things have passed away and all things have become new. And now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now, let's return to the remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears a theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, as a member of the body of Christ, you have already inherited Jesus' peace to inhabit his peace even now. In other words, you own his peace and he has given you the full right to occupy it as well. What supernaturally transitions you to enter into God's arrest and never exit it is his peace, which outclass and outlasts all the peace the world may ever offer you. Without occupying the peace of God, you cannot rest in him. Without occupying the Lord as your resting place, you cannot host his peace. This last and final section, the sixth section, we like to address peace and rest are proven as you make room for Jesus, the King of glory, as your King. First, in Isaiah, the 30th chapter, the 15th verse from the King James Version, it says, For thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning in rest shall ye be saved. Now, this rest is an attitude of quietness and being quiet. And it goes on to say, in quietness, which is now you're tranquil, you're not just quiet and in confidence, and in you trusting shall be your strength, which means you shall be mighty as a warrior. He says, and ye would not, they would not yield, they would not consent. God needs your consent to move into the peace and rest he'd like to give you. Let's also look what happened in Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, the 16th verse from the King James Version says, Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. They didn't want to change their manner of life for God. In both instances, you could see that God approached them. They understood what he wanted and wanted to give them. He showed them what they would receive when he just told them to do those two instructions. But you have to say, that is not going to me. I am going to enter in God's rest. I'm going to not exit God's rest. I'm going to hold on and host his peace. Let's look at what David did in Psalm 131. It says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or are things too high for me. What he's saying, he's refusing the things like Jesus was refusing, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. 
He says he was humbling himself before God by honoring God. He says, surely I have behaved and acquired myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. So now he's saying my soul has become quiet because I quieted myself what with the word of God, which can be the milk of the word, the meat of the word, but then you have it in your heart. So you're not sin against God whatsoever. And that will help you to remain quiet. And he says, let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forevermore, because he's showing them how to do it how you stay in expectancy from God when you're quiet. Let's also look in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 8th and 9th verse from the King James Version. And this is Paul saying, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it should depart from me. There were some things going on, persecution, and then the enemy trying to buffet him, getting him off of his game. And this is what God said, my grace is sufficient for thee, which means that he already had the answer. This is Paul. He already had the answer, but he didn't know how to actually apply the answer that God had given. He says, now it will avail unto you my grace. My grace is more than enough to raise a barrier for you. And he says, for my strength, and this is God's dunamis power, is made perfect and this perfect is finished just like when jesus said it is finished on the cross this is the same word to tell a stop in your feebleness so that means that the weaker that we are the strength we can have because now we are proving god's strength in our weakness and not trying to compete with god or compare ourselves to his strength when we just need to be in a place to receive it. Moses gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in the midst of the frailties. These are the infirmities that the power of Christ, which is Dunamis power of Christ, may rest upon me. Now, this rest is now it's spreading a tabernacle over abiding with him, which he knew that he was under the canopy of the rest of God, because now Holy Spirit is there to do the work. He had even a better understanding that when he wrote Ephesians, the third chapter, the 20th and 21st verse from the King James Version. And this is what he says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the dunamis power that worketh in us and the dunamis power worketh in us when we are in relation to rest that is what the greek says unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. Now I'll give you two examples of another rest, which actually means to remain at rest in such a place that you're engraved in that state. In Zephaniah, the third chapter, the 17th verse from the Amplified Version of Classic Edition says, the Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty one, a savior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in silent satisfaction and in his love, he will be silent and make no mention of past sins or even recall them. He will exult over you with singing. And that rest there is now, he's in a grave state of rest because he knows it's the finished work of Calvary that he's expecting. Now, this is how we should look at life the same way in Exodus, the 14th chapter, the 13th and 14th verse from the Amplified Version of Classic Edition says, Moses told the people, fear not, stand still, Firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your 
peace and remain at rest. Why he's saying that there is a state of rest where you're engraved in that state of rest so that you can have the peace of God rule in your hearts and in your minds. In Ruth, the first chapter, this is Naomi telling her daughter-in-law this. The ninth verse from the King James Version says, The Lord grant you that you find a rest, and that's a resting place, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. But then this is also Ruth, the third chapter, the first verse, the King James Version. Again, Naomi is saying to Ruth, who went with her, my daughter shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee. So now she says, I want you to come into rest. And then in Ruth, the third chapter, the 18th verse from the King James Version, this is what Naomi says to Ruth after she makes a proposal to Boaz. And then she says to Ruth, sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall for the man will not be at rest that means he will not be disturbed until he has finished the thing this day and that finish is to complete for it to be accomplished and let's look at the last verses from ecclesiastes the fifth chapter the 18th through the 20th verse from the amplified version of classic dishes of behold what i have seen is to be good and fitting is for one to eat and drink and to find enjoyment in all the labor in which he labors under the sun all the days which God gives him for this is his allotted part. Also, every man to whom God has given riches and possessions and the power to enjoy them and to accept that his appointed lot and to rejoice in his toil and that his labor, his trouble, his mischief that has come upon him, this is the gift of God to him. There is a reward. There's spoils of war. There's inheritance. There's gifts. It is says, for he shall not much remember seriously the days of his life life no matter how good no matter how bad they are why because god himself answers and corresponds to the joy of his heart this is what it means the tranquility of god is mirrored in him that means god's going to keep you busy receiving what he wants you to have because that means that you can rest in god's rest and have peace in God's peace. What would we like to leave with you as we are concluding the program today? You can supernaturally rest in peace even while you remain alive. Employ Jesus' passionate yoke upon you. Engage his compassionate service to you. That is the finished work of Calvary. You see, his yoke is not present to exercise dominion against you. Instead, it is a coupling beam of balance evidenced by your co-union with him. Your divine connection positions you to receive the manifold grace of God in every area of your life. Refuse to pull away from him so you can experience the weight of the glory of God. This is Catherine Joy Foster for King's Portion where we speak to the royal blood in you. You have been listening to The King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.